For Action News, I'm Anna Samovska. It's a process used for nearly 60 years, unlocking massive amounts of natural gas trapped in shale deposits right here in the U.S. It's called hydraulic fracturing, or fracking, and it's a safe and efficient path to energy independence. And it's also the topic of AXHA's latest publication. Take a look. Fracking has received much media attention in recent years, but the concept of exploring for natural gas is hardly new. Fracking is a process that enables one to obtain large amounts of natural gas, which would otherwise be unavailable. The gas is trapped in shale, which is a type of rock. So in order to free it from the shale, they have to do a number of things in order to get the natural gas from flow. One of the concerns from activists centers around the chemicals that make up the fracking fluid used to extract natural gas. Dr. Bloom explains many of the chemicals in it are part of household products you encounter every day. See, the problem isn't in their existence, it's in the amount of exposure you get. About 90% of the actual volume of the fracking fluid is water and about 9% is called propant, which is basically sand, and that's injected in to keep the fractures open to allow the gas to flow. There's about a half to 1% of the remainder are certain chemicals which have different functions. Many of the chemicals in the fracking fluid are really everyday chemicals that you'll find in your house, detergent, rubbing alcohol, acetic acid, which is vinegar, antifreeze. So th this is not, in general, a group of highly toxic chemicals. You don't want to be swallowing this, but these are things that um, most people come into contact with, you know, very often. And the concern over groundwater contamination? It's a baseless claim. It's very unlikely that this is going to happen because the aquifer where your well water comes from is uh, two or three hundred feet deep and the fracking well is a mile and a half deep. So you, the, the fracking fluid would have to rise up a mile or a mile and a half to touch the aquifer. It's, it's not only unlikely, but there hasn't been a single documented case of pollution of groundwater from directly from fracking. Perhaps the most frustrating and false claim as made famous by the movie Gasland is that because of fracking, you can light your tap water on fire. The movie illustrated this quite well, but what they didn't tell you is the truth. See, methane found in your water is derived from natural sources and it has nothing to do with fracking. The water from the tap did burn but it had nothing to do with fracking. There was no fracking in the area. The flame came from methane, which is naturally occurring. So this was very disingenuous and dishonest. It had nothing to do with fracking whatsoever. The United States has enormous quantities of shale gas trapped in deposits throughout the country. Obtaining it would not only minimize the nation's dependence on oil, but it would also allow for a significant decrease in air pollution. The goal is energy independence keeping the price of fuel lower, and of course not polluting our own environment in the process. You need to balance this against potential risks of spills and contamination. Uh, there has been no contamination. It's not that it's impossible, it hasn't happened yet. So there is no perfect way to get energy, but on balance it would seem to me, just from a chemistry point of view, that methane has it hands down over any other form in that it actually helps the environment immensely because of air pollution and the United States is sitting on an enormous amount of natural gas which can be obtained and in fact more than half the states are already doing it and I don't think there's anything stopping this. It's just not possible. We have much, much more to say on this topic. For our entire publication, we urge you to head to our website, aksha.org. That's A-C-S-H dot org. For Aksha, I'm Anna Samovska.